Greetings, my wayward witches, and welcome to my day 11 offerings for hashtag 21 days till Yule. While I do encourage and do my versions of shadow work all year, I know for most people the fall and winter season begins their journey within, just as the earth begins her retreat. And I wanted to share three oracle decks that I have found beautiful allies in shadow work, pathfinding, shamanic journeying, hedge writing, or what I refer to as rewriting the narrative or scripting. I do need to start by saying while I purchased my first deck over 30 years ago, I am not a card reader at all. In fact, I generally work with the deck in what most would consider non-traditional ways. But I know a number of the members of my Patreon, Coven, and YouTube community are definitely beautifully versed in card slinging and wanted to do a quick flip through of the decks so you can get a feel for the imagery and energy that it may invoke within you. I will share a little write-up on the back of the boxes as well as some of the intro as I do the flip through and how I connect to them personally. I will then share one of the ways I plan to work with all three and do a sample reading from the guidebooks so you can get a feel for what information is offered. The first deck is called The Magic of You Oracle. While I wish it was more diverse in representation, I was really captured by the imagery of this deck. Since the guidebook is generally secondary for my purposes, it's the card's image that takes me on the journey. I generally use the guidebook for what I refer to as rewriting the narratives. The back of the box reads, The magic of you oracle is what you turn to when you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and must crawl through and light it yourself. Each oracle card is a unique key that unlocks a door to your hidden truths, and behind each door lies a message to light your way and guide you on your path. Light the fires of resilience, recovery, and rebirth in your life. The intro adds, the cards invite contemplation and are a mirror of your soul so that you might know yourself more deeply and profoundly. Be open to this. You are worth more than a quick fix. I love that line. There is a magical aspect to each card in the offering of a corresponding ritual forged with witch's wisdom. The second deck is a new one that I actually unboxed and went through for the first time when I recorded this video the first time I videotaped it, but it was by candlelight and a little bit blurry, so I'm redoing it for you now. But that initial walkthrough confirmed for me that it was a brilliant deck suggested by my beautiful spirit sister Larissa. The back of the box reads, Ask a question and connect with the maidens, mothers, guardians, and crones of this profound and powerful deck for clarity, growth, assistance, and healing. Use this deck to draw lessons, solutions, and insights from the shadows and be empowered to walk in truth and shine your light in the world. From the intro, it reads, The Lantern Oracle illuminates the four directions of eternal feminine wisdom from her four phases of consciousness. Maiden, Water, Mother, Earth, Guardian, Air, and Crone, Fire. Now, I personally don't necessarily associate each one with those elements, but this is how the book is presented. Each phase of feminine energy speaks to a stage of our human development and spiritual evolution. The Lantern Oracle invites you to call upon her throughout your journey and shadow work for loving light where clarity, growth, assistance, and healing is needed. May it bring you much insight, warmth, and blessings. The Lantern Oracle illuminates the lessons and the gifts to be received from the shadows of challenge, 
change, and confusion. Just as the advice of daughters, sisters, friends, mothers, aunties, teachers, grandmothers, and the wise women of our community can help us understand ourselves, so too can the four archetypes of feminine consciousness. I'd like to add that in my belief and practice, the concept of westernized traits of quote, male and female energies and roles does not exist. I believe that everyone holds both within them and can speak from experience when I say that two of the most nurturing figures in my life were my mom's brothers. So please do not feel that you cannot connect with or work with this deck if you identify with being male. There should be no boundaries if you open your heart and mind. But back to the intro. The Lantern Oracle is an ever-present and loving yet candidly unapologetic light in the dark. Together, the young ladies and women of the Lantern Oracle nurture clarity, self-empowerment, and healing. They provide access to the eternal feminine energy, living love and wisdom, as a medicine to work with, personalize, and integrate. The spectrum of energy and wisdom of these four phases are eternal, internal, and ever-present. The insights are your birthright and are encoded within the pure source of universal consciousness that we are made of and ever connected to. The Lantern Oracle provides a way to access the spectrum of feminine energy and wisdom, I will add, within all of us. Her message illuminates the eternal lessons, perspectives, and strengths of feminine experience throughout the phases of life. Their insights are gifts that can be used to transform challenges, confusion, and turmoil into growth, new directions, and blessings. The Lantern Oracle supports you in facing the crooked forks and crumbling cracks and the missing tracks in your paths with grace, courage, and confidence. She supports you to make choices according to your truth and to prioritize what feels most aligned and right for you in each moment. The Lantern Oracle is a love transmission that offers a safe space for you to work through what in your life needs to be brought into the light and to be transformed by it. The young ladies and women of the Lantern are here to accompany you with unconditional loving light through any shadows or shades of darkness. The cards provide a pathway to increase awareness, confidence, and optimal growth. The final deck I purchased solely for the artwork. This deck was brought to my attention by one of my online spirit Ohana, my brother Ethan. For several years I was known as the Fireside Witch and I used the artwork of A. Andrew Gonzalez as my avatar. Ethan came across a deck that not just featured all of Mr. Gonzalez's artwork, but the image on the front of the deck happened to be the one I used as my avatar, and the image on the back of the card one of my soul DNA animals but we'll talk more about that in a future episode. I'm generally not a fan of the guidebooks by Lana Fairchild, and for the most part, the cards that I was already working with in art form for journeying and had established dialogue with, I kept those meanings, but I am pleasantly surprised by the depth of her writings on the cards and the frequencies associated with a number of them. The back of the box reads, You have a light within you. Trust in that light and in your own courage. The light is strong enough to guide, support, and empower you to fulfill your sacred purpose of healing and soulful manifestation. White light holds all of the frequencies needed for healing ourselves, each other, and our planet, and all her precious creatures. It is divine medicine for the soul, empowering the heart, clarifying the mind, and awakening higher consciousness. This light is within you and all around you. You were born to be that light. The universe rallies to encourage, inspire, embolden you to manifest your sacred destiny. A little from the guidebook intro. The white light oracle guides you into the luminous realm of the sacred, the sacred in your heart treasure. It is that which brings light into your life. The sacred is precious to you. It matters enough that you are willing to devote yourself to it, even when that requires courage, sacrifice, and growth. The sacred generates inner warmth that brings you joy. The sacred is a healing mirror that shows you the truth of your experience, which can include a compassionate reflection of your own suffering. It shows you how to heal. It inspires and protects you. What is sacred for your heart is unique to you. Yet for every heart, 
The sacred is an experience of sublime love and deep meaning. The sacred can be denied and ignored at great personal cost to our well-being, yet it can never be lost or damaged. Without it, life becomes superficial and we become disconnected, scattered, perhaps even depressed or driven and obsessed. Without connecting to the sacred, to the heart, we live from a false self. In such a state, it is not possible to be authentic with ourselves, yet alone with others. The sacred helps us remember who we are and shows us how to manifest our inner being. The sacred helps us remember who we are and shows us how to manifest our inner purpose. We can't know what our hearts truly want, who we are, or what we can offer to the world. We cannot live our true path and higher purpose if we don't know who we are. The sacred is your refuge and sanctuary, is what recharges your heart, mind, and soul at the deepest levels. It is your friend, your guide, your guardian, and your truth. The sacred is free, unconditional, generous, and giving of itself. The doorway of the sacred is found within the heart. From the heart we connect with, nourish, and develop our soul. When in darkness, we have a greater need of the light. When we are weary from struggle and suffering, we have more need of rest. Sometimes we may feel confused about how to respond to negativity in ourselves and in our world. The white light, accessed from our heart and soul, holds the spiritual guidance and healing we need to find our way. I had originally pulled a three card spread sample for each deck so you could get a feel for the write-ups in the book, but this video was veering on over an hour so I decided to do a reading for my Patreon coven and YouTube family using one card from each deck. This is a method that I actually personally work with. Depending on what I'm looking for, the first card is the reason I'm going into the shadows, the middle card is the card that I find in the shadows or the wisdom there and then the third card is usually the card of the light that leads me back out. So as many of you know one of my favorite things to say is embrace the dark to find the light and live in balance. So that's what this reading is going to be for all of you. Once again, I'm leaving the interpretations up to you and will simply be reading from the guidebook. I'm hoping that this will be something I do either at the beginning of every month, maybe even every week if there's time, as bonus material on my Patreon for all tiers. I hope you guys enjoy this little reading. The first card pulled is the key to intimacy. Intimate love is a core need to be met in relationship to ourselves and those closest to us. The journey to intimacy often includes learning what love is not. Regardless of whether we've received unconditional love while growing up, coming to know and accept ourselves in such a manner is challenging. Unconditional self-love is necessary and there is a learning curve for being able to allow another to see into us and accept all that we are and are not. This includes our most raw and least flattering shades. We all have them. It is desirable, but not easy, to let a deserving other into our lives, deep enough to know our full spectrum. Once we can know, accept, and love all of who and what we are, we become fully available for another to accept the totality of us. It also builds in us the strength and integrity to walk away from those who cannot genuinely respect or accept us, rather than internalize their judgment, rejection, or desire to change certain parts of us. Developing the capacity to honor and care for ourselves despite our flaws and shortcomings also equips us to hold loving space for others without judgment, conditions, control, or petty rejection. The journey to self-intimacy further teaches us the value and beauty of our flaws we learn to recognize any challenge that tests the intimate space we share with another as an opportunity to grow closer and stronger from working through it together. The purpose of obstacles is not to create distance or stop us, but to enrich, further connect, and expand us. Intimacy is as much about accepting each other's differences, struggles, and uniqueness as it is about respecting one another's boundaries. The key to intimacy with another leads to knowing, 
valuing and supporting each other's paths while it is necessary for our paths to parallel and be faced in the same direction it is essential for them not to enmesh be careful to whom you trust the key to your heart the featured mother wishes to remind you that pure love respect and integrity use what is uncovered to lift support protect care about and empower you in any instance that a person should prove unworthy of the key that you have entrusted them with by using it for anything untoward change the lock i love that it is never okay to have the sacred trust disrespected or abused you always hold the right to take back your power the same holds with you in regard to another's trust be equally honorable and respectful of how you treat any key given to you mother's message to see into yourself with the eyes of love allows for another to see unconditionally into you too of equal importance is that in turn allows you to lovingly see others this way i so want to comment but this video is getting too long so i'm going to move on to the next card the magic of you oracle card happens to be one that's hard for me to pronounce <laughs> but it's card 25 a phenomenon be still and listen to the spirits it is time to invite and commune with spirit guides and ancestors and consider their advice and guidance the girl of phenomenon has sacrificed one eye for inner sight as she bridges the world of life and death she's surrounded by white lilies the sacred flower of death this indicates that your willingness and ability to be still and listen will reveal the beauty of your situation the girl of phenomenon's crown chakra and third eye are fused in a web of pearly branches that inspire peaceful contemplation do not fear the underworld instead willingly descend into the darkness with grateful awareness that others who came before you have learned the lessons and answers you are seeking and are willing to share their insight and wisdom the ritual that is listed for this one is the dumb supper but i will leave that to you and the light leading us back out of the shadows from the white light oracle guide is magnetism of eros trust in what your heart yearns for without concern about how it will manifest take steps towards that which moves your heart reach out for what your soul wants and needs allow yourself to be vulnerable for only then can you be truly held that which appears out of reach or unavailable to you is closer than you realize the magnetism of eros is our soul's fascination with that which appears difficult and calls to us on a deep level this soul deep attraction inspires us to remain open be passionate and willing to engage with life other people and new of vitalizing pathways and practices that inspire us it keeps us moving on our authentic life path living by the call of the heart this oracle indicates that your heart is being called to a particular path or way of life it may not make logical sense, but to honor the call of the heart is to honor the need of the soul. The call of the heart can lead you into unknown and intriguing territory. It can feel liberating, but also unsettling as you let go of known worlds and reach for the unfamiliar. Following such a path will bring a fresh influx of energy and expand your understanding of yourself, your life path, and your higher purpose. It is meant to be. Eros is a Greek word for love. On a spiritual level, Eros is our passionate, open, engaged love for life. When we experience Eros, we are ready to embrace our journey. Its opposite is the destructive driven force known as the Nathos, which is the drive behind our undermining, self-defeating, and self-harming behaviors. We may engage in such negative behaviors in a misguided attempt to heal ourselves or make ourselves feel better. When we act negatively despite our best intentions to be positive, part of us trying to tell a story that is yet to be fully heard. Until that story is heard, we cannot let it go. We get stuck in a negative loop. 
To resolve the negative, the natos drive within us and in our world, we need eros. We need to embrace life, including our negative experiences. By acknowledging and healing our suffering, we can find the courage and wisdom to live more fully. The challenge and gifts of Eros leads us into our vulnerability. From there, we can also recognize our strength and dignity. We become able to let go and heal. This oracle brings the message that life has particular gifts to share with you. This is the promise of deep, soulful connections with your true self and with others, and a healing realization that you are truly desired and loved. You are encouraged to explore new pathways, especially if you feel out of your depth and a bit vulnerable in doing so, more so if they involve personal healing. The oracle indicates a path is opening up for you. It may not be the easiest way forward, but when your heart leaps at the prospect of it, Know something truly special is unfolding for you through that pathway. Trust where your heart is leading you. This is then followed by a healing process in the guidebook as well. One of the energies that a lot of the members of my coven and YouTubers and Instagrammers who've chatted with me in DMs is this need and this feeling of wanting to be seen, wanting to be heard, wanting the experiences that they've had to be recognized. And I think that last card speaks a lot to that. We can let go, but we have to have an acknowledgement of what we're letting go of. It has to be recognized, it has to be validated. At least that's my interpretation. Overall, the deck work really beautifully together. Sometimes I interchange the first two because they both are very beautiful going into shadow and finding voice in the shadow decks, in my humble opinion. If you have any of these decks, I would love to know your feels on them and how you work with them. If you have other decks you'd like to recommend for the winter season, please leave them in the comments below so that everybody else can benefit from your wisdom and knowledge as well. Thank you for joining me in this little, very long YouTube video on my winter oracle deck selections. I hope that you enjoyed it and again, as always, embrace the dark to find the light and live in balance. Many blessings and much gratitude from me to you.